Well, hello everybody, and yes, it is finally, finally happening. We are moving into all-in-one liquid cooler testing. But before we get into a bunch of roundups that we have planned for these things, I wanted to have sort of like a video that sets the stage. So in this video, what I wanted to talk about is a comparison between all of the different sizes of AIOs on the market right now, except that 120 millimeter form factor. I did a video for that right up here. They're not really relevant anymore, but if you want to check that video out, go right ahead. But the most important thing about this is that I wanted to have this comparison on a modern platform. So it will help you guys, if you're in the market for one of these things, sort of navigate based on your budget, your performance needs, and most of all, what size fits inside of your case. I also set out to make this a true apples to apples comparison, but product lineups with a complete range of 240 millimeter to 420 millimeter AIOs are extremely rare nowadays. So I reached out to every company that actually has them, but to be completely transparent, every one of them declined, except Corsair, who ended up sending their entire IQ Link series. So a big shout out to them for their support and jumping on board with this video. Of course, budget will be the first thing that will factor into everybody's equation. And that is one of the reasons why those 120 millimeter form factor AIOs just aren't relevant anymore. They are outperformed almost across the board by better air coolers that cost significantly less. And if we plot the lowest and highest average price of all the sizes, I think it's pretty obvious why this video is going to be important for you. There's a ton of overlap and that leads to some buying confusion. A few things jump out too. First of all, since 240 millimeter and 360 millimeter AIOs are by far the most popular sizes, they have the widest price range and are super easy to find pretty much everywhere. You can also see why 120 millimeter AIOs have been pushed into the niche category here. Unless you're severely space constrained, a 200 240 millimeter version will be a better buy. Meanwhile, the price delta on 280 millimeter and 420 millimeter AIOs is still pretty narrow since there is a lot less selection and both directly overlay the 120 millimeter based models. As a matter of fact, you can find quite a few 360 millimeter coolers for less than the average price of a 280. Naturally, models that are more feature packed like the Corsair IQ series are going to be in the upper end of every range, but even then, they're not the most expensive. That's reserved for AIOs with LCD screens and all sorts of other bling. And that's a major consideration when it comes to anybody who's buying an all-in-one liquid cooler. Are you somebody who wants this beautiful statement piece in your build that has RGB and a ton of features? Or are you looking for just your high-end basic cooling and not a bunch of bling? Well, that question right there is what contributes to this massive, massive price difference that we just saw. And for the IQ Link series, well, Corsair basically threw everything but the kitchen sink at them, though the ones that we have don't include the optional LCD screen. Other than the gobs of shiny RGB things, the real star of the show is Corsair's Link ecosystem, which allows you to daisy chain up to seven individual components together on a common channel with a single unified cable, or up to 14 through two channels on a link hub. It all clicks together so easily. Not only does this clean up a ton of cable clutter, especially around the pump, but it also makes installation a breeze, something that Corsair helps along by pre-installing the fans. It might not sound like a big deal, but it actually is. From an AIO perspective, Link is all about more control and more data. You get the usual suspects like pump and fan speeds, but there's also a coolant temperature readout from a sensor embedded within the loop and a quasi ambient temperature from probes on each fan's outlet. For some folks, it might be information overload, but personally, I love more data. Meanwhile, the radiator might look familiar to some of you since it's being lifted directly from Corsair's high-end Elite series. Though the pump has received a complete makeover with better flow rates and lower noise than previous series. There's also a ton of fine grain control for individual fans since each one gets an onboard MCU, even down to the individual LEDs. And here's the biggest shock for anybody who knows my love of IQ. Through all of our testing of these AIOs, it did not even crash once. It's like a complete shock to me, I know, and I might have to go and run out and buy a lottery ticket based on a lot of your guys' comments, but anyways, do you know what else isn't a shock? How good this power supply from Be Quiet is. This is the last time you're spending money on the power supply. Why? 
Because this is for a lifetime with all possible upgrades. Mm, why? Be quiet and enjoy the Dark Power Pro 13. Why? With their signature aluminum case and silent wings fan, individually sleeved cables with cable combs for that first class experience, with two PCIe 5.0 600 watt 12 volt high power cables. Now that's intimidating. Why? 80 plus titanium efficiency with an overclocking key. So truly a power supply for now and the beyond. Check it out below. Speaking of fans, they're one of the most critical components of any cooler, and there's usually some fundamental differences between the ones installed on 120mm wide radiator versus 140mm based versions. And no, I'm not talking about the size. Typically, 280 and 420 millimeter radiators have fans with a significantly slower top speed. And in some cases, they'll also have less static pressure at a given noise output level. So when it comes to determining raw cooling performance on otherwise identical AIOs, it'll be a delicate balance of radiator area versus fan performance. In plain English, that basically means exactly what we've learned from the air cooling side, that a bigger radiator might not actually lead to better performance. But to actually validate that, we've gone through two weeks of testing and all of that number crunching and everything that we've realized for this video will eventually be put into some of those roundups that we're currently working on. Anyways, the methodology has been added to our amended cooler testing that's linked down below. I also need to mention we're using a different, newer 13900K sample than what's used in our air cooler videos, so the results won't align whatsoever. Let's start with a relatively low 180 watts and go from there. And right away, there are some interesting takeaways here. I mean, sure, the 240 millimeter has the highest temperatures out of the four, while the 420 millimeter has the absolute lowest. But the 280 millimeter based H115i was able to match or beat the physically larger and more expensive H150i at every decibel point. This is mostly due to the 280 millimeter AIO being generally quieter, which benefits it in our noise prioritized testing. The last thing I wanted to mention here is that our Y axis is scaled to show as much gap as possible, while in reality, all of these AIOs stick to under 72 degrees and the largest delta is just 5 degrees. So they're all perfectly well suited for lower wattage CPUs. You can really see this when we narrow things down to a constant 38 decibels. 180 watts just isn't enough to put much stress on these all-in-one liquid coolers. Clock speeds don't really tell a different story either, with the 280, 360 and 420 millimeter versions all running neck and neck. The only one that trails behind by a slim margin is the IQ Link H100i, but even then, it's only at much lower decibel and RPM levels. At most, we're looking at about 60 megahertz, which at these speeds becomes nothing more than a rounding error and won't have any impact on performance whatsoever. Moving on to 253 watts, this is where even the highest end air coolers start to struggle on a 13900K, and the additional heat output does put a dent in some of these AIOs. As a matter of fact, the big boy H170i is the only one to get under 85 degrees, but this is another situation where that 280 millimeter is hitting slightly lower temperatures than the 360. The only exception is at 36 and 37 decibels where the larger AIO has a very narrow lead. So now we're seeing where the benefit of higher thermal dissipation comes into play, but don't think this means you need a massive water cooler to get noticeably better performance from today's CPUs. Because at least at Intel's limits, all of these except the H100i provide literally identical performance from a frequency perspective. Even the smallest AIO here is less than 50 megahertz behind the others across every single decibel level. And yet what happens when we crank the dial up to 11 and remove the processor's limits altogether. Let's start with the H100i, which slams up against Intel's maximum temperature of 100 degrees, all the way up until 41 decibels. And after that, it starts falling little by little until it eventually hits 98 degrees. The 280 and 360 millimeter AIOs end up neck and neck through the entire test. Though the H115i does have the benefit of dipping below 100 degrees about a decibel earlier. Meanwhile, the H150i gets a lot louder and its temperatures take a huge dip above 49 decibels. The biggest guy here got interesting results too. Its performance immediately seemed to hit a ceiling, but after 42 decibels, it started a steady march downwards until, like the 360 millimeter version, there was a shot of adrenaline at higher fan speeds and it ended up around 91 degrees. 
From a raw clock speed standpoint, there's a larger gap between all these coolers than in lower wattage tests up to 150 megahertz in some cases when you compare the 240 to the 420. But in general, if you want the absolute best performance at lower decibel levels on Intel's hottest running chip without limits in place, you should be looking at a 420 millimeter AIO, though it's amazing how well the 280 millimeter version kept up to the 360. But you have to ask yourself, with every one of these top three coolers so close to one another, even at a relatively low 38 decibels, do you really need to spend mega bucks on a 420? Probably not, but it does make for an impressive showpiece in your build. And that fact gets hammered home when we switch to gaming. Every one of these gets under 70 degrees with the 280 and 420 edging out the others. But does that even make a difference in frame rates? No. Absolutely not. When the margin of error is factored in every one of these, from the smallest to the biggest, it's the exact same level of performance. As a matter of fact, you could use a good air cooler without sacrificing frame rates. And yes, I know that's contrary to the current narrative. And yet there is one major benefit to upsizing your radiator to one of these guys that really not a lot of people end up talking about. And that is the ability to run your fans at ultra, ultra low speeds without sacrificing all that much performance. I mean, check this out. With the fans running at just 500 RPM or well below our noise floor, the raw thermal mass of the 360 millimeter and especially the 420 millimeter radiators becomes their secret weapon. Both were able to deliver whisper quiet noise levels while keeping the 13900K running well below Intel's thermal limits. You can really start to see that effect when comparing the H150i and the H115i. While the 280 typically beat the triple 120 layout in our other tests, it started to fall further behind here while the 240 millimeter was simply overwhelmed. So when it comes to all-in-one liquid coolers, bigger isn't always better, but size, it can definitely be beneficial. And look, the conversation I'm sure is just gonna focus on, hey, go with the 420 millimeter and everything else can take a hike, but the discussion should be a lot more nuanced than that. Let me explain. First of all, the 240 millimeter AIO might have trailed behind the others from a temperature perspective, but that wasn't completely detrimental to the processor's clock speeds in full core workloads. And it didn't make one iota of a difference in gaming frame rates. The best thing about the 240 format is that on average, it's a heck of a lot more affordable than bigger sizes and has the benefit of fitting into a wider array of cases. And of course, on the other end of the spectrum, you've got the big boy, you've got the 420 millimeter AIO. And for the time being, this, this is a very niche size. And of course it will be for the foreseeable future because it is expensive and you need a massive, also expensive case that will support this thing. All of that is actually for very minimal performance benefit, especially in gaming. And yet there's an epic amount of thermal capacity here, which gives you the ability to run at near silent noise levels while still getting performance that blows other solutions out of the water. So if you value a quiet computing experience along with plenty of future proofing and don't care about spending a small fortune, then a 420 is impossible to beat outside of custom water cooling. It's actually the race for the middle ground that interests me the most because the H115i ended up making the 360 millimeter H150i look a bit pointless. Right across the board, the 280 millimeter AIO was either better or equal to its bigger brother. That's because a 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler seems to strike an almost perfect balance of its radiator's thermal capacity and a 140 millimeter fan's raw airflow volume. There's only two very, very small, I guess you would call them like infinitesimal things that would hold me back from straight out recommending a 280 over a 360 every single time. And one of those is pricing. Because there are not a lot of 280 millimeter AIOs on the market right now, these tend to be a little bit more expensive than a 360 version. Here in Corsair's lineup, the 280 is actually a little bit less expensive, but it's still something that you need to take into account. The other thing is a visual one. To me, a 280 millimeter AIO looks a bit odd in a case that supports larger radiators, but otherwise, man, just go for it. So that covers everything that I wanted to discuss when it comes to a size comparison between all of these sizes of all-in-one liquid coolers. And ultimately, I hope it helps you make a more informed purchasing decision because these are not 
a cheap addition to any PC build. But this also will serve as a stepping stone to the next step in our all-in-one liquid cooling journey, and that is a massive roundup of all of the best 240 millimeter AIOs that we're gonna have out in a couple of weeks. So I will definitely see you guys in that video, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care, guys.